Chef David Chang is the creative powerhouse behind Netflix's Ugly Delicious and the popular Mama Fuko restaurant. The James Beard award-winning chef opened his first restaurant back in 2004. Bon Appetit calls his Mama Fuko empire the most important restaurant in America. You go, know David wow. Chang. I didn't know that. David, me neither, is a host and executive producer of the new Netflix series. It's called Breakfast, Lunch, and Dinner. He eats his way through different cities with celebrities, including Seth Rogen, who was hilarious, Chrissy Teigen, always funny, Lena Waite, cool, and Kate McKinnon, she was knockout, too. They learn about food, culture, and each other in the process. In the first episode, Chang visits a donut shop in Rogen's hometown of Vancouver. Lee's, I want to go there. Yeah, just roll it in sugar. You wow. stick it on there and then pump that there. That's amazing. Oh, my goodness. It's yeah. so good. I love textural contrast. Yeah. You get it from the sugar. Yeah. You get it from the actual donut. It's soft, crunchy. Mm -hmm. And you get the, some of the city from the jelly. I swear to God, I never thought of the jelly donut as, like, a perfect food. It is. <laughs> I have thought of it, David, as a perfect food. <laughs> Chef David Chang is with us. First on CBS this morning. You know what I learned on your show? That stressed is desserts spelled backwards. Isn't that good? Oh, stressed, wow. That's very stressed good. Stressed is desserts spelled backwards. So this is the thing, David. I think you've got the dream job. I that's watched your nice show job. and I thought, oh, God, I would love to do this. So your premise is through three meals, what happens? We just have good conversation and yeah. explore the city. And it's a sense of discovery about the guest or myself or the foods that we're eating. So you pick a guest, they get to pick the city? Mm -hmm. And how long does it take to shoot? Because you're with them all day long. We try to do it all within a day. Yeah. Wow. And sometimes it carries over the next day, but uh, it's a long one day, but it's a good day because there's at least three meals for sure. It's amazing how many moments eating yes. creates in, yes. in conversation. It's and the best icebreaker there yeah. is, yeah. Eating delicious food is the, it, like, everyone can understand what that might feel like or taste like. Yeah. Your late friend Anthony Bourdain, of course, paved the way for a lot of the shows like this. Uh, how did he influence, yes. how did his show and what he did influence what you're doing with your last show and now this one? Well, <clears throat> Tony's show, all the shows that he did, I think influenced anyone that did food or travel or food and culture. Yeah. Um, it just set the bar for everyone. So whatever we tried to do, uh, to do it differently was to still pay homage to what he did for all of us. I was struck by something you said in a conversation with Kate McKinnon uh, in the show when you say, I fundamentally don't believe I'm talented at anything because <laughs> I have to work yeah. so much more than anyone else. Like, cooking doesn't come naturally to me. True. That was a surprise to me, too. When you said, but you, really, you, you don't, think of, yourself, you don't yeah. think of yourself as talented at anything? I think I'm a really good cook, but there are other people that started out were better than I am. I just had to work. Like, Tortoise wins the race, in my opinion. Yeah. Right? And cooking is the one thing that I know that a lack of natural talent doesn't really have anything to do with where you're going to wind up if you just work very hard at it and are committed to it. And yeah. I think uh, I'm a result of that. Really? You don't think you have, like, a certain excitement for food or a palate or just a kind of big bear openness to the world, something that makes it magical? I think maybe I'm curious because I wasn't so good at it. Yeah. Right? Oh, well, does that, does that connect then to when you... Because you've said Momofuku is... Um, as you know, as acclaimed as it is, you said almost everything we've done has been a failure from the get-go. This is also true. Oh, the, the you're first... a loser, David. <laughs> yeah, but I'm so it's, yeah. it's so interesting true. the idea that so you yeah. failure doesn't intimidate you. I think you can't learn anything truly without messing things up and mm -hmm. experiencing some pain and suffering and try not to make that same mistake twice and to really push yourself, at least for myself, to to, to get to another level. I have to experience something that is sometimes scary and frightening and, and to work through that. Was it scary and frightening to be with Seth Rogen, who you said rolls the best marijuana <laughs> joints ever? <laughs> and so we see the two of you smoking marijuana and driving. I was worried about that, David. How'd that work? Well, and you guys were really smoking it, too. <laughs> my mom is going to be so oh mad. My God. <laughs> um, it was a fun day, but it was set up so th this is your friends? there was nothing to be worried about in terms of how we were driving. I, uh -huh. I can't explain the technical the aspect. The car was hitched to another vehicle. <laughs> yeah. yes. no, so. they were, but it was. But my point is, you get to learn a lot about the people who you're work, who, who you're who you're going, who you're experiencing things with. You and Chrissy Teigen, you're in Morocco, and somebody says, "Hey, Jackie Chan." And you just sort of laugh it off and say, see, people can still be racist all around the world. Yeah. You just make everything a delight with you. Well, I just think that's the best way to travel is to just experience things, be out of your comfort zone, and then just see another place and see the people there. And it doesn't mean that 
maybe they haven't seen an Asian man before. Yeah. Right. You know? I it's interesting ask. you said in 2030 you hoped you reached That's what the I was going to ask. You were? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and well, ask Well, I mean, mo- it, I love a this lot question. of people who sit at this table, yeah. you know they want to be remembered for all time. They want to yeah. be immortal. And you yeah. told the Washington Post recently that you hope by 2030 people say, David who? Who, yeah. They want to be forgotten. Well, Why? I think it's incredibly foolish to want to be remembered when you die. Like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> right? Like, I think if I do my job, however it may be, if it's good enough, then it becomes commonplace. Mm-hmm. And it's not remembered anymore. Mm-hmm. And, and that is through food, I think. And being a Korean man, an Asian American in this country, I think if I can help open doors in a way where other people can do it, like, it's a good thing. Yeah. I'm, my job is successful if people don't remember me. Well, it's a great show. David Chang, thank you so much for being here. Breakfast, we can now lunch. call him Hugo's dad. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Hugo's dad. I want people to remember me. Yeah. Yeah. Breakfast, Very lunch, nice. and dinner is streaming now on Netflix.